What's going on guys? Um, we achieved a very efficient, very high voltage operation within the transmitter. Um, it has a flickering output. I just have to properly tune up this receiver coil. Um, this is the highest voltage output I've ever had in the transmitter. It's now using a very efficient ZVS module, 0 to 600 volts DC. And we now upgraded the diax to side axe for increased negative resistance at higher voltage input levels. So we're using side axe instead of diax to handle the higher power levels. I had to upgrade my capacitor that's in parallel between the base and emitter of the MJE1307 switching transistor. This seems to be a very capacitive heavy technology, meaning if you want the utmost efficiency it will require a lot of capacitance. And we're running a LED light, very bright. It excels at running non-linear loads and producing wireless power. Um, so this is the highest voltage I've ever had going into the system. 500 volts DC at minimal current consumption. Probably at about anywhere from 1 to 5 milliamps. And um, let's get a good look at that. So I rebuilt a better transmitter. The key concept to its operation is to create a transmitter that cancels out all of its positive resistance with the correct value negative resistance components. And in theory, it should become so efficient, it becomes self-activating. This is my ground connection right here. I earth ground the 28 gauge wire, which is the hot wire coming off the transmitter. Um, what powers it is just a 12 volt battery. Goes into a 0 to 600 volt DC ZVS uh, module. That module, that module's adjustable output goes into the transmitter. Before it goes into the transmitter, like Don Smith said, it needs to pass through a resonant resistive shunt, which I'm using 20 watt, 300 ohm cement resistor with a correct value capacitor, which is 10 NF. Um, passes through our current meter, and there's just a kill switch there to turn the system off. This is still the experimental model. Um, I've never had a transmitter with an input power this high before, and when I say input power, I mean voltage. The voltage is bordering 600 volts DC input. Um, it's a scalar mode of operation, or a longitudinal mode of operation, possibly measured in volts per second. Um, saying scalar waves would be oxymoronic. It's just, just call it scalar energy. So, I maintain the high level of efficiency from my last videos, two or three videos ago. But it's not quite as efficient as I'd like it yet, because I had it so efficient before, it was activating just from a voltage potential only, while not consuming current, and it produced enough wireless power to see that effect in these little receiver lights, and it would activate from just a voltage potential at no current consumption at all, and I put some pretty sensitive meters on it, and that's what we're trying to build and achieve, is using Don Smith's concepts. And he, and if you check uh, Rich Frederick's channel, he released more Don Smith videos too that might be important. So, yeah, like I said, our goal with this is to create the utmost energy efficient transmitter that cancels out all positive resistance with the correct value negative resistance with components, possibly using side axe or die axe or a combination of them or other various negative resistant components. And the system should, in theory, get so efficient, it self-activates. Just from either a ground connection, or different potential connections. And, um... I'll show you something interesting, too, that occurs. A fluorescent tube lights... From touching various parts... It's actually lit just being near the circuit. And when this occurs, there's no additional power draw from the system. 
a lot of loadless wireless power effects occur, meaning it doesn't draw power. When we, when we pull wireless power from the longitudinal scalar field, if that's what it is, that hasn't been confirmed, but I can't measure a frequency on the oscilloscope at all. If anything, I'll just see a spiked waveform very brief, and I can't get a frequency lock. Um, if we're in that longitudinal mode of operation, that seems to be key for loadless wireless power effects. You don't want any form of electromagnetic uh, power transfer. You want longitudinal where your decoupling cause from effect, I believe, I could be wrong on that, but I believe that's what's occurring. Um, as you see, that's lit. Fluorescent tube. Everything in the entire circuit becomes active, and it almost becomes a, uh, the circ the whole entire system almost becomes an emergent system a little bit, meaning it'll become more than the sum of its parts when perfectly tuned. I don't have it quite there yet, because if I did, it would spontaneously activate from a voltage potential only without consuming power. But, um, nonetheless, we're getting there. Making improvements with the side axe. And something interesting is if I take this plate antenna here, and I just lay it on my floor, and I take the wire for it. Watch how interesting this is. It's almost like an electrostatic effect is coming off the device. I will zoom in on it and show you that. So I have the wire from the insulated metal plate antenna connection. And we have what's almost like a um, electrostatic effect. Wish my camera would lock in on that. It's like we're using voltage potential only at no current. And doing this actually improves energy efficiency, believe it or not. So, if I fully connect this antenna lead, I'll use even, I'll draw even less power. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I fully connected the antenna. And the light got brighter, and we're drawing even less power, even more negligible power. So... That's definitely something to be explored. I have to fine-tune this, fine-tune some other components, and free feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and join the Patreon. And thank you.